anything. Every, every single card in Epic is designed to be powerful and flexible, uh, so uh, there are no dead cards. So you should be able to make use of everything you've got. Now that said, um, getting good synergies going into your deck, having the right ratios of different card types can make a huge difference in the power level of your deck. Yeah, so. every, everything's powerful and epic, but trying to find the, the amount of ambush and draw two effects, putting it all together, there's uh, a lot of choices in Dark Draft, and it's always exciting yeah. to watch. So, so uh, who, who do we have up for our first match? Yeah, so we have Sam Black versus Martin Dickey as our... Uh, and these yeah. are these are two veteran players. Um, yeah. Both uh, both players played uh, la in last year's championship. Uh, yep. Both players are frequent players on the yeah. uh, Epic Digital app. Um, so uh, um, yeah, we mentioned that uh, you think they may have faced each other before. I, I've, yeah, I've, I've been active on the app. I have seen Sam Black and and uh, Martin Dickey. They've both been playing a lot on the app. I've played against both of them. Uh, they both have really great dark draft strategies, and they probably have played uh, played against <laughs> each other leading up to this tournament. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, um, this is, a, I believe, this is a, a favorite format for both of these players. So oh yeah, uh, yeah. I, so I've talked to I Martin about dark some, uh, yeah, some, he loves some great dark drafting. So yep. uh, the players are getting the cards ready, and uh, um, when yep. we uh, kick off, they will be uh, they will have ten packs ready to go. You they can are. see that they have them, uh, have them laid out in front of them, and we will be ready to go when they are. Yep. Yeah, Martin, uh, he favors the good faction, the the yep. yellow yep. cards, uh, higher than most competitive players I've seen, uh, and he he has built some incredible good decks uh, that in, in the past. So I would really love to, to see not only where he ends up, but uh, also if uh, Sam might know that. <laughs> the, uh, uh, it's really, uh, it can be a real advantage if you have preferences for, uh, for an alignment uh, color of cards uh, or uh, individual cards, which other players don't value as highly. Um, it, you have a higher opportunity of uh, of getting those as second and third picks, um, and uh, and if your uh, opponent doesn't value a card as highly, uh, they might not be as prepared for the strategies involving it. So that's uh, yeah. You know, we'll see how that uh, that plays out. You know, that said, uh, uh, Sam Black has played uh, quite a bit of these uh, of the drafts, so I'm sure he's uh, uh, oh, yeah. he's familiar. But uh, very importantly. Um, we have new cards yeah. uh, uh, available in this draft. For the first time, uh, players are going to be uh, drafting with uh, cards from the Pantheon set. Yeah, 48 new cards. Yeah, the first four packs of Pantheon are included in this dark draft set. There's one of them right there. Uh, Elaine is chosen. It looks like uh, Sam Black is starting with Word of Summoning, though. Yeah. Uh, That's a... Certainly a powerful card. Yeah. R regardless of faction, the zeros really stand out, especially in Limited, as some of the most powerful things you can do. Now, uh, there's a Hunting Petrosaur from, uh, uh, from the new set. Um, that was originally a uh, Kickstarter promo, and it has made its way to a tournament legal card. Yep. And so we got two zeros picked up yeah. there. Sam has started with three zeros from three different factions. Yeah, so those uh, the zero yeah. cost cards, those are free cards. Uh, each turn in Epic, each player has one gold um, they can use to play a card. If a card costs a gold to play, it's going to be very powerful. Uh, and then there's free cards, which have that zero, so zero in the silver circle in the upper right-hand corner. Um, those you can play without spending gold, so you can play as many of those as you want. And speaking of zeros, looks like he's picked uh, yep. three cards. He's picked up another one. Also interesting here to say that all four cards that he's passing are evil, regardless of what Martin wants to go into. He's maybe he, he he is forced to take two evil uh, cards on this next pick for him. And that's just part of Dark Draft. So not only taking the zero there, but f uh, forcing two cards in evil for Martin. So clearly uh, Sam prior is prioritizing uh, free cards. Um, this gives you uh, the ability to make more plays. Um, however, if your deck does have too many free cards, which don't have the, some of them have the ability to spend gold to uh, um, give you a powerful effect, but yeah. uh, others do not. Uh, 
We just saw him take so, his first coin, uh, New Dawn, yeah. uh, another new card from Pantheon. Yeah, along with Corpse Taker. Start so. a pack three. Yeah. So without a zero here, let's we can start to see maybe what direction he's going to head in. Yeah. So uh, um, the wing, uh, wing death seems to be something he's considering. Quell's a very powerful card. Especially if he expects to take not only maybe a token strategy or all these zeros. Yeah, yeah Quell, Quell free, could be a great the board The three cards yeah. uh, um, are... Uh, Quell has the ability to uh, uh, banish all, uh, card, all champions that cost a gold. Um, so if you have a lot of free champions out, that can be quite a powerful effect. Yeah. T Rex pass. That's a yeah. pretty strong indicator exactly. uh, that Martin is not in wild. Um, Misguide Herald, a very powerful card um, as well. Yep. Sam's going to take that. He's going to say that raging T Rex at this point in the draft, and he, he goes ahead and picks it up. He already had a few other wild cards. Looks like one, but he sees that. This is the end of pack three, which we should say after pack yeah. three and, and pack seven, a little bit of a review period for yeah. each player. Um, so Sam's that taking now. a look at what he's got. So he's, he's picked up that T-Rex with potential card drawing. What else did he pick up in that last pack? The uh, Force Mage Apprentice oh, Force Mage as well. Very, Another zero. Yeah, and uh, and a and a very powerful uh, board control card. Yeah. Uh, if I'm if I'm in Sam's position here with uh, six zeros out of your first nine cards, I, I would be very happy. Oh well, that, yeah, uh, yeah. So that, that's not. <laughs> so uh, the co the packs do come with uh, deity cards. Uh, those are were supposed to be removed from the from the drafting cards. So Sam's going to pick up another. Those are for casual play. Uh, so yeah. they allow you to uh, play as a uh, as a elder god, a god or a demigod in the world of epic, and uh, have some really cool game mechanics to go along with them. But they're not used yep. in the tournament play. So uh, Sam just set that one aside and got a yep. replacement card. And it looks like a powerful one, a race. Um, a race is uh, from the original set. Yep. Um, allows you to draw two cards and uh, return uh, a champion yep. to its owner's hand. He had just picked up the Force Mage Apprentice as well. Just adding to it, it if at this point, he'll, I would see him taking a lot of zeros as well as Sage and Wild cards. Yeah, and see him head him, him in that direction. Cards that allow him to draw, so uh, like the Gudgeon there, for example, and his, uh, his T-Rex, these are... Uh, all very attractive in the strategy yep. that he's going with because he he's he's got a lot of free cards. Big problem with that is you can run out of gas. Your your plays are a little less powerful than the cards that cost of gold. So if you can have gold cards that give you effects and draw you cards combined with free cards, you can yep. have uh, uh, quite a powerful uh, uh, quite you can have quite powerful plays. Yep. And there's Sea Titan. That is a pretty strong card yeah. in the mid. And constructed, and, and, and he takes it over it the off. zero, yeah. Yeah, Sea Titan is untargetable. 11 offense, 14 defense, so a uh, very powerful stat line, and has a tribute ability, so when it comes into play, uh, you can return target champion to its owner's hand. That can be a real uh, tempo swing. Yep, and he took the Keeper of Secrets and the Inheritance of the yeah. Meek there. So he's, for the most part, except for a few zeros in that gudgeon, staying away from evil, yeah. uh, especially with it, with that early pass. Uh, Hasn't seen a ton of wild to go with that T-Rex. Um, yeah, Mart Martin's done that to me before. Sometimes he will take a card that is slightly less powerful for his deck to pass loyalty twos to either put you under pressure or try to go for a different strategy. And Sam's going to have to decide here. We're in the middle of the draft, and... That Draco would be a great pickup. Yeah. An again, though, another loyalty, too. Let's see if he sticks yeah, to the... final task. Quite a powerful event. Um, cast out. Yeah. Uh, actually, a new zero I really yeah, like. Yeah, cast out is a, yeah, uh, a great card. Yeah. Sam can't be too happy with his pack. He's, he's, had, he's forced to pass some, some, uh, some very good cards. That was a very powerful pack. Yeah, this this pack's tough as well. Four different so, cards, four different factions. Very Entrancer, yeah. very powerful loyalty card for uh, draft. Uh, very Entrancer, not very Trickster. Um, 
and there we go. <laughs> uh, and uh, the Fairy Entrancer uh, loyalty two um, uh, uh, gets a plus one plus one counter. When it attacks, it gets a plus one plus one counter. If you uh, remove, you can remove two plus one plus one counters on it to permanently gain control of an opponent's right. champion. Right. So, so with loyalty two, basically, right, right when it comes into play, you yeah. can take something right away. So, yeah, I'm excited to see that card played uh, this weekend. And there's another one, uh, Brock, the Fist of Lashnoth. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. He's a beast. I, I would be surprised if Sam doesn't take that here. Yeah. That that card is uh, really exciting out of the new Pantheon cards. Unblockable by champions with less attack than this card's attack, which is almost every card in the game. Yeah. Uh, loyalty to draw a card. This card gains Unbreakable this turn. I should mention, Sam has already picked up the final task as well. And which if Brock is in the discard pile, final tasking a Brock back into play is one of the strongest things uh, I, I was saying about Brock when I first yeah. saw him. And uh, he loves yeah. the final task. Oh, yeah. yeah final task uh, brings the champion back, but at the end of the turn, uh, the champion is broken. But uh, if you've activated the loyalty on Brock, then he's unbreakable, so yes. he just lives through it. Just, yeah. And that was the end of pack seven, so we're, we're reviewing now. I would say these last couple of packs for Sam have been, been a lot harder. Yep. I think he's probably really happy he picked up those zeros early because Martin has been passing him basically n no zeros. Yeah, and he's, had, and he's been forced to pass uh, a bunch of zeros over to Martin for uh, in favor of some uh, yeah. uh, very powerful... Uh, uh, gold cards. Yeah, I'd expect cast out and a couple of those zeros to be in Martin's deck. So I'm in Sam's position. I think prioritizing wild for Brock and for the raging T-Rex still I, I would want a, you know, a few more yeah, he's, for sure he's definitely, in the wild faction. If he faction. wants that loyalty, he's definitely short. Yep. Uh, so, <clears throat> um, although the Sea Titan is a very tempting card to take. Yeah, that Fumble, of course, very powerful. Um, yeah. Silver Wing yep. Guardian's good. Which one did he go with? He did go with the Fumble. Even though that Sea Hydra is in the pack, the power of Fumble over the loyalty for Wild is, is what he went for. Right. Doesn't surprise me. So it, it may be that uh, that he will have to get lucky to activate those loyalty abilities and he'll just have uh, right. a couple big, big uh, hitters yeah. in his deck. So... I would expect the, I think it was Dracus Fire, it's at the back of the pack right now for that loyalty. And we'll see what the other one he takes. Dracus Fire and, and something here. He could take the Roxas Displeasure if he's looking for more draw twos, and, yeah, and that's what he goes with. Does, yeah. Even if it seems odd to have that in a deck. Uh, where he doesn't have a lot of demons or demon tokens, he can and just use draw. that. Right, if and, he is and, looking for more. And, uh, and he did pick up the Dracus Fire, which is a good pickup and definitely something he needed for the Brock and the uh, Raging T-Rex. Again, no, no wild cards in this pack, though. And he went with the Soul Hunter, right? Soul Hunter, yeah. Uh, so he's got a little discard protection. Yeah. Soul Hunter is a really interesting card. You, usually something uh, we see in competitive play. Uh, it, frantic Digging, uh, which allows you to discard it into your discard pile. Um, it's a great against Knight of Shadows or Thought Plucker as well. So he hasn't seen any of those yeah. cards. So and, and also yeah, yeah. very solid against ground uh, um, large champions. Absolutely. Like, you know, it's actually really, it, I was going to say, Raging T-Rex has to attack every turn, and Soul Hunter can block that attack in every turn. Uh, if it keeps coming back. Here's the start of the last pack. Scrap Golem. Uh, a really cool card out of the new set. Uh, this is what he's looking at right now. Uh, loyalty 2 with Blitz. You can banish a card from your discard pile to make a copy of it. Yeah, that's that's a really cool. Powerful effect. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. So it creates a banish. It makes a, it makes a Scrap Golem token, which can make another token of itself, which yeah. is... No, Just a cool strategy. Uh, and we've got the free card Devil. Um, nice, yep. nice uh, aggressive uh, free card. Yep. 
Mythic monster. Yeah. That's a high. that's a that's a good pickup here. He's he he's still probably thinking I needed a few more wild, but have, whether have or not you get the wild loyalty, obviously right. mythic monster itself oh, is, yeah. a, is a great card. Yeah, big, you don't need big a loyalty body for on that. the table with a uh, with a card draw attached. And all right, yeah, that's all thirty. They have their thirty cards ready to go. So uh, um, they're taking a uh, quick review of their uh, yep. of their deck, familiarizing, refamiliarizing themselves with their picks. Yeah, and then and then they'll shuffle up and they'll play with everything. So, what what do you think uh, from what Sam Pass Martin? We didn't we didn't get to see much. I I th I think Martin's gonna have evil. He very well will have some of the good faction, but he also might have a lot of wild. He might yeah. have take he might have he might have been in wild. Yeah. He might have opened two really strong loyalty to wild cards and passed that raging T Rex. Yeah, I I uh, uh I don't know if there's any loyalty to he would have picked over exactly. T Rex, but he uh he as you said, he might have picked a just a generally powerful card and try and uh um, wasting one of yeah. his opponent's picks is very possible. And, and Martin and I have actually talked about that before. He has passed me packs with four loyalty two cards. Yes. And sometimes only in two factions. And uh, he, he, he loves doing that. Yeah. So, uh, he, and, um, yeah. so the power level of the cards with loyalty uh, shift right. a lot. If you, they're, uh, they're a little bit under curve if you don't have your loyalty. But right. if you do get your loyalty, they can be extremely powerful. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the trade-off. Uh, some some competitive players that I've seen them avoid loyalty too entirely. They would rather just have you know a hodgepodge of of, of you know strong cards and sure. not try to be forced into anything. Other players will take that loyalty to at the very beginning and say, yeah, "I'm going to find their deck I'm around gonna, that yes. around that power and card. be excited when loyalty two cards get past them in that faction." Yeah. So there are definitely a couple of schools of thought. Uh, when it when it comes to which which way to go in dark draft yes yeah so uh um so i i think sam's deck came up pretty strong it looks like a uh fairly powerful deck. yeah so uh, he he definitely has enough zeros zeros was something we saw him prioritize early and he kept taking them when he could even that little devil late yes. uh i think he probably has like eight to ten uh yeah. and and that is a good number a 10 is a number i strive for if i can get 10 zeros that's sure. that's the number uh, i usually and, go for, and so. uh, a card like little double is great because you can put out some uh put out some pressure on your opponent without spending your gold um right. try and uh try and force your opponent's hand yeah and uh, uh and uh, have control over the uh over the action the the primary plays that people are making co costing those gold if uh if you can uh, as the player uh as the attacking player if you can force your opponent to spend their gold before you attack that exactly. opens up so many more options for you exactly and there there are other cards like little devil dark knight yeah. um, even some of the new cards uh, uh gareth's juggernaut yeah. and and kalani cards i think we'll see a lot both in the limited and constructed on screen today uh and so yeah looks like the players, players are, are shuffling, shuffling up, up getting ready to getting ready to go yeah Martin's a lot of fun to play with. Yeah, uh, really, really great guy, and and uh, all these chatty is having fun. <laughs> Even got Sam yeah. smiling. It's gonna be fun. A lot of money on the line, but yeah. uh, I believe I've seen. Uh, I believe I've seen Martin doing a little bit of epic streaming. Yeah, as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's he is he's on Twitch, and we're starting with that with that alpha. Uh, we've seen um, other people as well. Um, so the uh, Ep great. Epic Digital app is in alpha right now. Uh, it is uh, available for purchase on the White Wizard Game Store if you want to join the alpha uh, for Android uh, uh, and uh, and on the computer. Um, the uh, iOS uh, was uh, ava a limited number of iOS was available to our Kickstarter backers, uh, and iOS of course will be available when it goes into a full release. Yeah, really excited about it. I should have said earlier as well, um, Martin actually has it on his name tag. He is CNOZ, C-N-O-Z, on online. If yeah. Just as uh, for, for you guys out there that might be uh, might might have played him. You're like, oh, or I know CNOZ. Or, or want to issue a challenge. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now you know. 
go and challenge Bart and I see if <laughs> it would be great for him to uh, get home, get to his computer, uh, fire up the app, yeah. and then see a bunch of challenges yes. against CNAS. So if you want to play Martin, you can. You can challenge him uh, on the app. <laughs> and he would love that. Yes. Sam also, Sam's name is... Uh, Sam something black. I, I, I can get that for us as well. Sure. But uh, he also is online. Yes, yeah, Sam. Yeah, Sam Black he plays the Epic app quite a bit. Yeah. So uh, Sam's had uh, Sam Black has had quite a bit of uh, tournament success in the Magic the Gathering uh, uh, card game. Um, that's a game that. Uh, uh, the designers of Epic, uh, my, uh, myself and Darren Castle, are quite familiar with. Uh, yes. You know, yes. Having, uh, having played for many, many years. Um, so, uh, um, the. Uh, yeah. uh, the round so, should be 50 minutes, correct? Um, I, I believe we can check with uh, we can check with the head judge, but I believe yeah. the rounds are 50 minutes for this, there. and then uh, players will have extra turns. Yeah. Yeah, you're being, you're being very modest. You and, you and Darwin are both uh, uh, both uh, very accomplished in, in that game. So, And we're excited you made this one. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yesterday we had uh, coverage of uh, Star Realms. We had uh, uh, Star Realms Legend Series where a, a player uh, be, gets to become a card in the game. Uh, and we had uh, Star Realms Digital 1K Tournament. Uh, at White Wizard Games Fair here in Framingham, Massachusetts, we're going to have uh, more Star Realms and Epic events today. We've got some qualifiers for the Epic $50,000 Epic Digital Championship this summer, and uh, we have uh, uh, we have another Star Realms 1K, and we have a Hero Realms Legend series, and we're also demoing new games uh, like uh, Sorcerer, yeah. uh, which is on Kickstarter right now. Okay, players are getting ready for game one here. For maybe newer players coming to the game as well, uh, something else I always love to say about Epic is uh, the, not only the mulligan process, but how each game starts. So you start with five cards. Uh, you can choose once to take up to five, but maybe just one or two. Put them on the bottom of your deck and draw that many cards back. You lose one life for each card you choose to do that with. But I think the best part of it is, regardless of your mulligan process, each game, uh, both players start with the same amount of cards. Yeah. And we'll see uh, Martin do that actually right now. And uh, the, yeah, the mulliganing in uh, Epic is uh, is fascinating because you have every card you can use, but you want to make sure you've got a variety of options available. Um, so uh, figuring out which of those cards to uh, mulligan and that uh, that um, one health uh, uh, cost uh, for mulliganing uh, is it's not too bad. Um, uh, so, but it can matter. So, oh, you know, figuring out yeah. how many cards is the pro, uh, appropriate number. It looks like both players might be going for two. Yep. So we'll be starting with tw uh, score 28 to 28. And uh, I have seen that in a constructed game. People talking after the game saying, I, you know, I'm mulligan three. Maybe I could have mulligan two. It might, you know, that w that one extra damage does matter. But let's see. And both Mulligan, they're about to start. Yeah, Sam yeah. Uh, looks like he's on the play. And leading yep. off with a pack alpha. Uh, it's going to put yep. two wolf tokens into play. It's also uh, um, uh, going to give his... Uh, uh, those wolves are going to need plus one, plus one from the Palca pack alpha special ability. And Mark. So all of his other wild champions get plus one, plus one. So his uh, his wolves are three threes. And it looks like... Uh, um, when Sam went to end his turn, Martin uh, got an angel on the table. Going to be gaining some, uh, going to be gaining some health here. Yeah, that's one of the new cards from Pantheon. Quite a powerful card in limited. It gives you, uh, gives you a airborne threat, right. um, And gives you uh, authority. Oh, sorry, health right away. Uh, uh, and yeah. with uh, that, and has righteousness, so it can continue to gain you health. So yeah. Martin's come up to a quick health lead and has 
two very powerful yes. plays back uh, to back. Yeah, the the Kong there again. We we talked about it. Maybe he does have a bunch of wild and Kong. One of the best cards in limited. Yeah. Uh, it, it 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 takes care of almost everything. Keeps a thirteen fourteen around. A lot of pressure. Very strong start for Martin. And it certainly could have been picked over T Rex, for example. Exactly. If you, if you thought, you know, I, I'm not going to go into the loyalty. I'm going to take this Kong over the T Rex and maybe get Sam to pick that up, thinking I'm, you know, or just trying to lure him into it. So the the that Kong pick is very strong. Looks like Sam has a lot of zeros in his hand. A lot of choices here. So Sam's been put back on his heels very quickly here. Uh, Martin's uh, gotten off to a health lead, um, making uh, a uh, counter aggression uh, uh, challenging for Sam to pull off. Because uh, uh, Sam's only got 22 remaining points of health, and uh, with a 13 uh, offense Kong on the table, uh, 22 cannot feel very safe. Right. And so Sam looks like he's passed uh, on his turn. Um, Martin was fine with that. And right. He passed as well, um, uh, maintaining his uh, his board advantage. Yeah, and this this uh, ambush 4-3 here, we've also seen unquenchable thirst in Sam's hand with that Rox's displeasure. Should be just enough to finish off the 6 defense of this angel. Looks like that's what Sam's... I would, I would expect that to be what Sam goes for here. Yeah, and there it is. Unquenchable Thirst plus the Rox's Pleasure. It'll give, uh, give Sam yeah. a couple points of uh, health and, uh, and take that airborne threat off the table. Now, uh, it's uh, um, both players still have their gold available. Um, right. Martin's turn... Uh, and he does have that Kong on and the table. Both players haven't played. Uh, something that, about last turn, to go back for a moment, is is th you look at that, and both players had lots of cards in their hand. They both have cards with gold, you know, their gold up, but that was just a turn where, and, and you'll see this a lot in competitive play, where a pass followed by another pass, both players choosing not to. We went straight to Martin's Ooh, turn. This is boo, so. Uh, but, Rax yeah. of the Demon Tyrant uh, has a uh, loyalty ability that deals damage to uh, opposing champions uh, that was able to uh, uh, sweep those wolves out of the way, uh, making a path for Kong. Um, so Sam here is digging for answers. Uh, he's, yeah. done, he's drawn two. Um, that fumble's got to be pretty tempting. That was here. a really good pickup off the draw two. to take three instead of 13 from this Kong, especially because they've both played their coin now. Yep. And he'll get to recycle to boot, which will uh, allow him to dig a little bit deeper, trying to get some answers for this uh, board uh, disadvantage he finds himself in. So Sam here, uh, you might see him pause when deciding when to recycle some during his games. We do know he has the final task in his deck, so he needs to be you know, careful about which ones he chooses to recycle and which ones he wants to keep. He keeps that pack alpha yeah. in there, just as an example of something he might be able to final task. Now, importantly, he can final task his opponent's cards as well. Those as well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> So he's picked up an inheritance of the meek that could that could definitely reduce the amount of pressure he's under, but will not get rid of those uh, those right. demon tokens. Yeah, he actually has inheritance of the meek and quell in his hand. But Martin not only has gone wide, but he's got zeros with the demons and coins with rocks and Kong. So Sam doesn't have the the full board wipe right now. Yeah, so um, he can, Sam can reduce the pressure he's under, but he can't uh, can't remove it with either of those two cards. Yeah. So he may fish deeper for answers here with uh, and put a little bit of defense on the table with that uh, mythic monster. Um, yeah, that seems to be at, at twenty one life right now to to to. Use Quell or Inherence to me to get rid of Rocks he and could, Kong, or go with Mythic or Monster. He could, he could combo. He could um, 
inherits the meek now take out uh the uh take yes. out the the, the um the kong and the roxa and then follow that on his up on his opponent's turn with a uh a quell, quell. getting rid of the free champions yep and, um, that's looks a great like point yeah that is his he chooses that over the mythic monster I, I do i like that yeah, yeah. no um martin that does leave martin with his gold available Right, so this is the the opportunity for Martin to keep the pressure up. If he has a champion with ambush, the 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 pressure continues here. Let's see what Martin oh, has. His hand is getting low. He may choose to restart right. by drawing two cards, and he does. indeed does. Goes to the draw two, draws for his turn, and this quell could bring things close to even. It's it's now it's it's dangerous uh, if Sam chooses to quell now, and Martin has a, a large blitz champion. Um, he does need yeah. to be ready for that. Well, let's see if Martin can punish him, getting yeah, him to play no, his gold Sam first or not. Sam is the one who uh, we've seen. Uh, we've seen the, uh, I believe, rampaging one in Sam's hand. Uh, right. Uh, Sam's so he also knows there's less to, of those. Yeah, he has, right. has to be happy to be holding that in, instead of Martin uh, right. having it right now. I can't see Martin's hand from here. I don't know if he has a blitz. Doesn't look like it. He is. Still going to play uh, that's Thanos. Yes. Yeah, the loyalty X card from Uprising. Still still a powerful play. Yeah. Still putting uh, 13 uh, you know, attack and, and defense and into and play and on this turn is strong. followed up by the right. knight that was revealed for loyalty coming in for yeah. a very significant five points of damage. Yeah, and Dark Knight playing this very similar role as Little Devil will play in Sam's deck. Yeah. yeah. The uh, apprentice comes down and finishes, takes out the knight. Titan balancing Thanos as uh, Sam is establishing some significant yeah. board presence and control. This is a really, really good turn for Sam. Finding the Sea Titan, being able to activate the allied ability with the Force Mage Apprentice, and uh, Martin using his coin for. And uh, the yep. uh, Crystal Golem uh, came down, uh, um, forced the uh, uh, forced the Sea Titan to block, uh, and then was uh, and then was broken to draw two cards. Getting in for two points with the zombie attack. And there's another zero taking care of another zero yeah. as they continue to uh, wing death oh, against Sea Titan. Nice. That that's the that's one of the best things you can do is yeah. take out a large, sometimes even untargetable, uh, wing death. That tribute which just happened. Uh, each opponent must break a champion yeah. they control and, if able. Uh, and Martin choosing not to attack with the wing death. Yeah, I've, I've you know seen that more and more with smaller, especially uh, airborne champions with blitz. You know, you've played your coin. You pass before attacking. It, it gives you just a lot more options. You don't get sure. ambushed by another uh, you know, airborne champion. If the, your opponent chooses to draw to, then it's much safer to attack. Yeah. No, Sam had used his coin on Quell already that turn, but uh, maybe Martin was afraid of a, of a free champion coming down for uh, uh, block. Nice, we've got a uh, large minotaur hitting the table. Yeah. Drawing a card. Yeah, that is Brock the Fist of Lashnoth. Uh, a card I'm really excited to see. I, I, I would love to see if uh, some constructed decks build around him, especially with Final Task yeah, you know, later may, today. We may see him yeah. constructed around We may see him a lot a today. Card. So, followed up by a draw two from Zombie Apocalypse for Martin. I'm not sure what Sam's plan is here. Wing Death, if they're. Okay. Yeah, that Keeper of Secrets is really going to help keep that Brock, the Fist of Lashnoff, alive against the Wing Death in the air. Sam also might be writing down some key cards he thinks he might see in games two or yeah. three. Yeah. 
decides not to activate the Keeper of Secrets right away. He Keep doesn't. Available. Doesn't. He could be yeah. a very effectively block a zombie. Right. Instead, oh. though, Martin is going to Siren Song. He wants, which he wants that Keeper of Secrets to work for him. That's that's uh, twofold here. Not only taking the Keeper of Secrets, but now this Wing Death uh, very well might be able to get in over the air and not only deal four, but also get rid of that proc. This is one of those scenarios we've talked about where you're forcing your opponent to spend his gold. He's got right. the Wing Death coming in. Uh, I'll take out uh, Sam's champion. If Sam does nothing here, then that's a great scenario for Martin. Yeah, getting getting your opponent to, to play their gold first just means you have more options. You know what they've done, and, and you can see if you can make the most optimal uh, ad advantage of it. So... Uh, so during the wing death attack, Sam, final tasks... Martin's Angel from earlier back into play. Tribute, gain, gain four health. He's also going to have a blocker. Uh, well, that Brock alive. A, a blocker with Righteous, which yeah. can give him even more health and take out his opponent's champion to boot. Yeah, and he, and he, he does it. With Righteous, he'll gain another six there. That was not the Angel of Light. <laughs> That's a pretty big turnaround for Sam. And and even even though the Angel will you know, be broken at the end of turn and back into Martin's discard pile, that you know, t keeping the Brock alive, not taking the four in the air, gaining ten there, that shows you the power level of yes. Final Task. Yeah, Final Task is, uh, is uh, a card I'm sure we're going to see in the constructive portion of the, uh, this event, and it's very powerful limited as well. Yep. And now <laughs> we've got uh, we've got the uh, Titan coming down. Yeah. Um, we're Steel getting, Titan. Yeah, Steel Titan coming down. We've got uh, Keeper of Secrets. Uh, ability is stolen. Secret Keeper of Secrets. Uh, um, ally ability is being uh, activated here. I'm drawing Martin another card. Yeah. Uh, and I'm I'm excited about Steel Titan. Uh, a, a card for Sage uh, with that unblockable by champions with less attack than this card's attack. Uh, 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 the same as Brock, the Fist of Lashnoth, yeah. but in an untargetable a sage uh, deck. I've seen people talk about that as well. So, fortunately, that that steel titan cannot block yes. the the Brock. Although I don't think scenario. Brock's going to be sw uh, swung in with. Well, he oh. is aggressive play. Perhaps, yeah, I mean, a, basically, a, Martin. Very very few ways to deal with it. So Martin will take fourteen there, followed up by the mythic monster, a thirteen fifteen something that can block the steel titan. Indeed. And look at that life total. Sam has crawled back into this. Yeah, he's called, yeah, and uh, and Martin's been brought down to the uh, to the land of uh, the mortals with uh, <laughs> yeah his health come back down. But that uh, that his coin this turn very powerful. Ice Drake loyalty to expend all champions target player controls, and he also gets to recycle again, drawing another card with keepers uh, keeper of secrets. Wow, that siren song is doing is, work for yeah, Martin. Is doing incredible work. <laughs> So I think that mythic monster should be expended. I don't. Maybe maybe Ice Drake actually didn't have the loyalty two there. He just still played it to have. That's I think that's what happened. I don't think he revealed. Yeah, he didn't actually reveal loyalty two off the Ice Drake. Um, oh, that, but just that, still playing it as a six eight am you know ambush, uh, airborne and and drawing a card through the recycle on keeper. Still powerful. Very powerful play. It would, it, if he could have expended the uh, Mythic Monster, that would have been huge for him, but still a powerful threat yep. in the air. Looks like Banishment, that Mythic Monster. Yes, that it... Sam doesn't have an answer for the Steel Titan. Martin, uh, Banishment on the Mythic Monster, that Steel Titan's going to get in there, and that's that's game one. Yeah, so... Uh, that turned quickly um, there at the end. Martin was able to. Um, uh, Sam Sam fought hard to get back in uh, back in a, a, a decent scenario. Um, did not give up on offense. Swung in with his his large yeah. champion. Uh, but uh, Martin was able to take advantage of that. 
and Sam find you know with final task there's there's so many choices yeah. and when you're looking at two different discard piles I do I do feel Sam found a really great line for his final task yeah, and played it played it very to, well yeah almost enough to get back in the game yep so we're looks like we're gonna move over uh, to our backup future match right away so we have Adrian Sullivan on left and Nathan Overbay on the right so looks like this is game one yeah. A little bit about these players. Nathan Overbay finished 16th at Worlds last year. Was reinvited. Um, I actually know him quite well. And Adrian Sullivan on the left. Many of you uh, watching might know from uh, from Magic. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so we, <laughs> Another one of those really really well known and okay. and successful Magic players. Like this game, this guilt demon is attacking. If if Adrian Sullivan is indeed a two, yeah, that's uh, that's three airborne, and yeah. that is the end of that game. It looks like Nathan took that. So uh, um, <laughs> very quickly back to the but uh, match. An update Sam though, Nathan uh, with a with a game win. Yeah. <laughs> So um, I am going to uh, uh, step out and uh, work on some of the uh, White Wizard Gears uh, fair activities. Uh, Darwin Castle, uh, designer of, uh, of uh, Star Realms and uh, lead developer of Epic, is going to be uh, stepping in and, uh, and joining you. All right, welcome, Darwin. Well, good morning. <laughs> yeah, good morning. <laughs> this is uh, game two here, Sam Black versus Martin Dickey. Yeah, game one uh, looked like it went pretty well for Martin. Uh, always enjoy seeing uh, Steel Titan get in there. Oh my gosh, yeah. It was, uh, we had both Brock the Fist of the Lashnoth and Steel Titan. A lot of the new Pantheon cards uh, showing their power there. And Martin will most likely be on the play uh, Sam will have gotten to decide, and in, in competitive play, we, we usually see uh, the the player if, show, if they get to choose to, ch to be on the draw. Yeah, I think uh, in Epic, uh, a lot of the top players both like to react to what their opponent's doing and like to be the first one to draw a card. Exactly. And the combination of those two things are pretty tempting. Um, you know, I think some players, let's say in Constructor or whatever, might build their deck to take advantage of going first, you know, and partly with that in mind. Um, but, uh, and if you could draw a card going first, that would certainly be very powerful. But, right. Uh, exactly. Know, it, it's hard to get everything so that there's an absolute balance. There's certainly an asymmetry to it. And, uh, you know, like I said, the as you were saying, most of the top players seem to think that uh, going second has at least a slight advantage. It's yeah. like both players are taking two mulligans. You're going to start the game with 28. Same as last game. And <coughs> I do agree. I th I th cards like uh, Raging T-Rex is an example of a card that is really powerful to play on, on, turn, on yeah, turn one. First. That's probably some of you know, Triceratops, some of those other cards are right, some want, of those. You want to get some yeah. card draw and get your opponent on the back foot right. so like they're not happy being the one reacting all right. of a sudden. And Martin is... He's trying to uh, do that. Sam puts uh, Martin on the play for game two, and Martin starts with... 18 uh, attack and defense right onto the board sped out over through Roxa. So the, the big question is, does yeah. Sam have an efficient answer? Because M Martin didn't draw a card off that. So if Sam, right. let's say, had a answer that was efficient, then suddenly the card advantage gap grows, which is a huge part of Epic, obviously. Exactly. And so Sam wisely doesn't return <laughs> Roxa, but instead returns one of the demon tokens right. and draws two cards. And speaking of Raging T-Rex, it looks like that's an option for Sam, and he's going to take is. it. Yeah, very strong early. And So suddenly you find Martin with only four cards in hand and Sam way ahead on cards in hand. Right. And their board position arguably favors Sam at this point. Yep. And that is the power of both a race and... Raging T-Rex there. Yeah. Very good start for Sam. <clears throat> and uh, 
the board position is just so fluid in Epic that uh, card advantage is often, you know, cards in hand is often a more valuable resource. All right, Martin's working on cutting into that card advantage by yep. bringing a Crystal Golem. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if he chooses to break Crystal Golem right away. Uh, he also may choose not to, and he doesn't, because uh, Crystal Golem also a really great blocker against Raging T-Rex. You can block and then break to draw two. Oh, his side doesn't like his option, so he went but, ahead yep. and broke it. So I found it interesting. Mm -hmm. Sam Black played a Corpse Taker with no target in the discard pile. I'm guessing Sam he, had, he actually had down eight. seven cards yes. and figured it was better to get a potential chump blocker and or way to get rid of cards in his right. discard pile in play rather than discard it. So exactly. it made sense. It was just a little unconventional. So Martin did break the Crystal Golem after his draw step, you know, taking that draw two, taking a step back, getting back up close to par and cards in hand for Sam so he can see what he can do here. Goes with the banishment on the Raging T-Rex. Yeah, again, that's a very efficient. He's getting rid of the big threat while keeping his hand size the same. And, uh, you know, that, that cards like that are a huge premium in draft. And he has some information because he's seen uh, some cards in Sam's hand from the loyalty too. Right. Like Sam has a interesting uh, combination in his uh, hand because he's playing one of them right now. Um, yeah. And that uh, gets him two wolves and goes with the pack alpha in his hand. Yeah, he has both. Uh, this is the a new card. Is this was it her name? Cure? Yeah, yeah the there she goes. Yeah. yeah, the wolf caller. Oh, Sam has built himself some Wolf Tribal. He's got the Pack Alpha as well. It's pretty cool to see those two together. Those are strong. So Martin is fearlessly setting in the Dark Knight, which, uh, because it's a vampire, has Unbreakable on his turn. So right. he's just seeing if Sam wants to throw away one of his uh, champions to prevent the five, or whether he's going to use his health as a resource and take that five. <coughs> Yeah, that's one of the many uh, little mechanical things going on in Epic. I like that all of the champions that are vampires have unbreakable on your turn, but it's perfectly breakable on your opponent's turn, sort of reflecting the differing power levels of a vampire night and day. Yeah, no, that's so cool. And Dark Knight has is is an incredibly strong card. Uh, we did see Sam Black with the Force Mage Apprentice last game, which is a great answer to it. Um, it doesn't look like he's in his hand right now, so. Martin might be able to attack for a couple of turns, try to chip down at uh, either Sam's life or some of those wolves. There are there might be more coming here, though. They are indeed. Yeah, it looks like Sam can produce wolves faster than the Dark Knight can take them down. And uh, very quickly, between uh, Kira and uh, Pack Alpha, those wolves could be a major threat. <coughs> Yeah, and Pack Elf is not just uh, wolves. Your other wild champions have plus one attack, plus one defense. So like Kira is stronger as well. Yeah, Kira is psyched. <laughs> yeah. All right, Martin's uh, had yeah. enough of that. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta get all those wolves out of there. Zombie Apocalypse. Now, it's interesting because uh, Martin, if he'd used Zombie Apocalypse on his own turn, he wouldn't have killed the Dark Knight. Um, however, um, it, it's really good tempo if you're going to sweep the board to sweep it on your opponent's turn. Yeah. This is a good point, though. He does say, I'm going to play Zombie Apocalypse off turn. I'm going to need something. I'm going to need something now before these wolves get out of control. So it looks like they uh, each ended up with three champions in the discard pile, so they each got three zombies. Yep. And as it often does in these situations, the zombies <laughs> take care of each other, yep. leaving the board clear, as if the Zombie Apocalypse was a normal sweeper. And this is something I actually really love about Epic. We're you know, m multiple turns into the game. Neither player has been able to deal even one point of damage to each other with all of these powerful cards. Each and person really, everyone's had the answer this game. M Martin has obviously decided that uh, he had nothing uh, powerful enough to play on his turn with an empty board, so he, he didn't use his gold. Sam didn't use his gold and went straight to Sam's hand. And uh, Sam's trying to put Martin on uh, the back foot now. Yep. So Martin here, choosing to take the Crystal Golem and the Roxa with his Arcane Research, 
I, I like this play from Martin. Sam Black has final task in his deck, and uh, Martin's just making it so that that final task has less targets as well. I, I like that choice. In the meantime, he's yeah. uh, getting some good search out of the arcane research. Yep. So he'll be able to look at three and choose one. So. Wing death, cave troll, and hasty retreat. So Wing Death is a little bit weaker since the Village Protector has uh, some friends with her. Um, but maybe Martin would want to be just choosing for loyalty here just to make sure he's got the right yeah. color cards in his hand. Um, and it also just to get good to get more freeze in his hand. Yeah. Haste Retreat, super versatile. Always can be a draw to if you need it, but is also really strong as a, as a, as a tempo. And he, he chooses to draw to right away. Yeah. As it, he's on the coin ability on it. Yeah, history not great against Village Protector. No. <laughs> so now Martin can't pass on his gold uh, wisely on his turn because he's facing down some threats. So uh, that'll force him to spend his gold first, allowing right. Sam to be the one responding. So while Martin did get the benefit of the card draw, uh, it does give Sam the tempo advantage. So Martin goes with Steel Titan. The new card from Pantheon that Which won that? him the game in game one. Actually see. pretty good in this situation. Yeah, let's see how it is here. And Sam's going to use a Faint as just, just a draw two off turn. Yeah, f Faint will allow you to do clever combat tricks, but sometimes you just need to draw yeah. those two. Yeah, just a draw two off turn in this scenario for Sam. So it looks like Sam uh, got a uh, inheritance of the Meek, which would be intriguing in this situation because uh, it wouldn't get rid of his uh, soldiers, but it would get rid of Steel Golem. Yeah. I mean, Steel Titan, excuse me. He picks up Brock there. So both Brock and Mythic Monster in hand. Champions that actually can block Steel Titan. So he can relatively. Uh, safely play uh, attack with the human token because uh, the steel gom's got to sit back and wait for that village protector. Looks like Sam doesn't have loyalty to for the Brock. So he's reconsidering that. Instead he's going to go with me and myth, 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 myth monster here. Uh, at least he knows the banishment's uh, already gone <laughs> this time. Right. But yeah, Steel Titan's not quite as good when you're on the back foot. Although, Martin's going to do something about that with... Uh, looks like yeah, this is the new angel from Pantheon. Six attack, six defense, tribute, that gain four right when it comes into play. And we saw we saw Martin use this uh, to, to great effect in, in game one. And it looks like, you know, Sam, very few airborne champions, very strong on, on the ground. But... Uh, Silver Wing Protector, right? Yes, there it is. Sil Silver Wing Guardian. Yes, that's the name of the new card. I couldn't remember it. So as long as Sam has some human tokens in play, the Village Protector can attack pretty confidently. And I like this. Sam played his coin first with Mythic Monster. Martin needed to play his coin as well and played the Silver Wing Guardian. But now this Village Protector... Coming in. So he played cast, cast out, out to get rid of one of the humans while getting to his own, so he's got some blockers for the village protector at least. Yeah, I really like cast out. Um, you know. Yeah, cast out was actually designed by Thomas Sorensen, and uh, the art is uh, based on him as well. Or yeah. he helped in the design process. I was going to say, yeah. It, it, epic card game Tom. The big thing that Tom wanted was a uh, free event that he could use to get rid of a muse. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he, he wanted it to be in good, so, sort of like a, a good equivalent of Rax's Curse. Yeah, and I, I really like Cast Out, and it also has that draw to effect on it. I think it's a card that we'll see a lot of people pick up in Dark Draft, and I know I know I'd like it in uh, any deck I have. Yeah, and um, it would fit right in a human token constructed deck if anyone's Absolutely. playing those uh, today. Yeah, its baseline deals with you know Dark Knight off turn or Muse and so many other cards. 
uh, but it does have a big upside as well. Oh, and here's Ribus. This is uh, a Canopy Sniper, uh, also a new card from Pantheon. And also a card uh, based on uh, a, um, a Kickstarter backer. Uh, he has a, a band uh, where he's called Rhythm Bastard. And so that's where the name Ribus comes from for oh. the many people on the internet who've been curious. That's and so cool. There's I didn't actually know that. A, a symbol in the art on uh, his, his right outfit, shoulder, which is uh, associated with a symbol from his band. That is so cool. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. And I think Ribus is also just uh, a really new, fun addition to, to the Wild Zeros. Uh, both a mix again that that, that it, it can it can blitz with the loyalty too. It can be aggressive. It can also deal three damage to any target of its choice. And in this case, Ribus against this village protector could be very good. And yeah, Sam has had enough. That is inheritance of the meek, banishing all non tokens. So it's definitely a reset button. So they each have one soldier token, and that's it. One human token, and that's yeah. it. This is still a very close game. M Martin has a more life, but Sam has more cards. Yeah, and, and this uh, is you'll notice while well, Inheritance Meek yeah. allows you to sweep off turn, Sam did on his turn, so that way he wouldn't allow uh, Martin the extra card draw. And Martin. So again, neither player used their gold on Martin's turn. Right, but that white dragon putting pressure on the following turn. So let's see what Sam has. All right, but Sam's got huge card advantage now because he didn't get the recycle off the white dragon. Yeah. And so now Martin's down to about three cards. So it makes more sense for Martin to pass his turn because he's got less options to choose from. So sitting around and drawing cards doing nothing works to Martin's advantage. It does. But, but Sam's having none, nothing more of that. And this is very Entrancer? Is uh, yes. the new... So, again, uh, it's new to Sam. He's oh. not realizing that he would need to loyalty to it, which is... Uh, oh, so he has both... He has Keeper of Secrets, which he wants in play, so he can recycle, but it's, it's also it's needed for loyalty, for too. Loyalty, so that's a, a choice he's going to make. And I, I think yeah. you, you need the loyalty, because that's really what makes Fairy Entrancer yeah. super powerful. Another card based on uh, a Kickstarter backer. So he does. He chooses. He says, I'm not going to be able to draw the card with uh, Keeper Secrets through Recycle, but, take, but I am going to get your Take your, white your dragon. opponent's best champion, attack right away right. with an Airborne champion. Seems pretty good. So yeah. uh, that uh, Farron Transfer is uh, the art's based on a fellow named Alex, who actually his son designed the card. His son plays Epic more than he does, so he's like, "Well, this is what my son would like to see exist." And th this is v the design is almost exactly what his son. Uh, That's incredible. Asked for. That's a really fun card. Yeah, it's a really uh, complex and yet fun card, uh, and uh, it, we decide not too complex for uh, our purposes, and, yeah. and it uh, creates some interesting decisions. And we saw. Martin in game one used Siren Song to get rid of that keeper, but in this game he has had to use Siren Song into Lightning Strike as draw twos. He just has to refuel his hand. Yeah, uh, and, and and now he has. So let's see if he if it's you know in time. At Thirty five. He's got a little bit of time. Yeah, but but uh, Sam is starting to put the pressure. This is a word of summoning. Uh, on Martin's turn, we'll be able to attack with the White Knight. And same as mounting. Uh, so he put the corpse taker in the race back. A couple cards he wouldn't mind drawing again later. And and to note, leaving his large that's the leaving his large champions for, for his final, final task. task. Yep. Yeah, we we probably won't see Sam recycle those. And after the word of summoning, Sam chooses to draw two, just as Martin did. Doesn't really have to put more than the demon to put a lot of pressure here and keep his hand stocked. And that uh, Fairy and Trancer is a 3-2. Coming in with Airborne. Hey, you don't always see Fairy and Trancer get to do his job twice, but uh, it's well on its way. Yeah. <laughs> Roxas Curse taking care 
of the White Dragon. So Neither player played their coin. Martin Dickey's deck is very well equipped for free champions. He's got Roxas Cursed, he's got Cast Out, he's got Siren Song. Yeah. <laughs> Sam may be forced L to win with champions that cost a gold. Yes. Martin has a lot of zeros. And so does Sam. And that's, that's providing some really interesting gameplay. Sam's saying, what do I m maybe not want in Martin's discard pile? He goes with the White Dragon. Yeah, I mean, in case, you know, Martin has... Uh, like lessons learned for the zombie apocalypse, maybe? Right, or perhaps a uh, army of the apocalypse or something. Right. <laughs> you know, he can't oh. stop a memory spirit from being effective because there's <clears> too <throat> many events there, right. but he can do work on things that get yep. uh, champions back. And Sam is really pouring on the pressure now. He plays the Force Mage Apprentice to take care of the 1-1 one -one human, followed up by the Sea Titan. He not only is able to recycle again with the Keeper of Secrets, but uh, that Force Mage Apprentice can deal another two with those allied abilities. And the nice thing for Sam is when you've got that many cards in hand, you, you're not overcommitting. Like, you're just dominating the board. <laughs> yeah. And these are two cards we didn't see in Game 1 from Martin. Spawning Demon and Grave Demon. Grave Demon. Grave Demon. So Grave Demon uh, was actually yeah. uh, designed by Thomas Sorensen when Thomas Sorensen actually uh, was a wizard for a week at Wet Wizard Games. He had uh, backed the Kickstarter um, at the highest level, and uh, he got to come uh, work with us for a whole week and got several of his cards designed and included into Epic, and this was one yeah. of them. That's so cool. Yeah, Grave Demon, uh, a card I really liked, along with Erratic Research, uh, expanding how we can... Uh, get rid of that discard pile and its power with cards like Final Task and just recycle in general. That's a strong play from Martin, especially with the Keeper of Secrets for Sam. Yeah, he's still behind on the board, yeah. but uh, he's stabilizing a little bit, but he's also still way behind on cards in hand. Um, you, usually you want to at least be ahead on the board or in hand, but when you're behind on both, unless your opponent's like in single digits, that's exactly. usually a bad sign. <clears throat> And Martin's deck doesn't seem well designed to do 22 out of nowhere, so he's going right. to have to grind his way back into this. He chooses to use Bitten on his turn, playing a life with the spawning demon to make another demon token. But at, that's his coin for a turn. It looks like this variant trancer is going to be able to just, <coughs> just attack Take again. the grave demon or, or yeah. perhaps even uh, the spawning demon. He's going to. I know that Martin is looking for cards, but if he does, if he doesn't. Yeah, bitten it's that fairy entrancer that's going to take his great demon. But uh, Martin's very aware of the importance of uh, number of cards in hand in, in right. Epic. And it's a tough choice. And, you know, perhaps Martin has another off turn sweeper in his hand. Right. In which case, none of this really matters. And right. card in hand exactly. is what matters. But the uh, gap in the health total is quickly diminishing. And indeed, yep. the Grave there Demon it is, is uh, joining uh, the black side. So Martin's making a second win, keeping his health total high, digging some more for some options. And if Martin can actually survive, you know, with the health gain and, and playing some defense, he, the fact that he had the Grave Demon, perhaps he could uh, win by decking. By decking himself. Yeah, yeah, th that that is definitely something we should say. Uh, a little bit different than other games you might have played. If you go to draw a card, and you don't have any cards left uh, in your deck, you win in Epic. And that is definitely something that comes up, and, and can come up in uh, Dark Draft. Yeah, it um, doesn't come up a ton, but when new players learn that rule, they always think it's really interesting. And yeah. Basically, we don't want to... We don't want to make it so that drawing cards is good, and then suddenly it's terrible. <laughs> right. <laughs> we we don't want to punish you for doing. It. We want to reward you for it, so it's good all the time. And it does make cards like Grave Demon Am Amnesia that much more powerful. Yes. Wow. That's so uh, <laughs> Drock is fire from Sam. That was pretty good. Drock is fire. Mar Martin definitely needs. Uh, the, uh, looks like he does not uh, have the off turn sweeper. I think he drew to with the dark offering, and oh yeah, so that means that Martin doesn't have one here, and he is going to take a lot of damage. Eleven, fifteen, sixteen. I hope one of those two cards he drew is very good, because <laughs> he's under. He's in a he's pretty be, tough spot here. 
Yeah. Because even if he sweeps on his turn, then, oh, and there's... Yeah. <laughs> a crate with... Uh, drawing That's enough cards can just put the Soul Hunter, hunter right in, in the, the play. discard pile. So, like, let's say he sweeps, and the Soul Hunter comes in, and perhaps Sam plays an Ambush Champion. All right, so that's not that's a bad start. So Draka Dragon Tyrant will get rid of some very annoying champions. Um, obviously, it won't get rid of all of them, but boy, you got to start somewhere, and that's a pretty good start. Sam's at 22. It's too bad that uh, Martin didn't have one more wild card, because then he could have played that Fire Shaman first. In fact, with Sam at 22, Fire Shaman, if he didn't have an airborne blocker for Draka, that's... 12 to take him to 10, and then if Sam didn't have life gain, the flame strike plus the fire shaman might have been able to finish Sam off in the next turn if Martin had one more wild card in his hand. We'll have to see what Sam does here, though, with that. Well, I think Sam still, I think got, Sam I think still has his coin, task. though, yeah. so yeah. The question is, is there something useful to final task here, which is less clear. It, I, I mean, I guess he could final task the Fairy and Trancer. I don't know if he's got loyalty for it, though. Because he's so far ahead on board, he could even just choose to do that as a as just a chump blocker, even, against the Draka to not yeah, take this 9. not taking 9 is pretty exciting here. Yeah, especially when Martin has revealed the Flame Strike and the Fire Shaman exactly. in hand. I mean, that's just 11 to the face on, if Martin wants on his turn. Sam's thinking this is a lot closer than uh, I thought it was. Sam doesn't have a lot of other great options in his hand for right this situation. He's got yeah. plenty of things that are good on his turn. but I'm He not does have the brand, actually. He has loyalty, too, for the brand as well, and, and he could gain five that way. Right. So. The nice well, thing yeah. about the brand is, sure, it doesn't stop Draka, but it does help keep him out of flame strike range. Wow, so he yeah. went ahead and did a draw, too. Instead he, of he, yeah, the, he evaluated that what was in there was not what he wanted to do with final task. Well, one, one assumes that Brand uh, had something to do with his decision. <laughs> the fact that he knew that it was a little safer to take that nine. Yeah. And the unquenchable thirst. Yeah. So That's very he, strong yeah, he's there. Getting gaining the health, he's getting rid of the yeah. fire shaman. I don't think that flame strikes can be able to finish off Sam this turn. And Sam is has more than 12 to attack into Martin this turn. He's going to start with the 11-14 Sea Titan. Really forcing and the issue for Martin here. He, he did draw a Vanishing, so if oh, Martin just wow. throws down a blocker, that, that blocker could go right back to his hand. So the good news is he has this, the loyalty for the airstrike, which is huge. Yes, but it could very well get Vanishing, and Martin could be at one here. We'll have to <clears> see <throat> before blocks here what Sam decides. And uh, if he goes to uh, one with the Vanishing, the Little like Devil, yeah. I think this... This could be it right here. Yep. Unless Sam has See, another good free card to play in his opponent's turn. Uh, <clears throat> and he knows most of Martin's hand at this point. He actually knows the flame strike as well, so there's only one unknown here for Sam. This little devil should do it. Yeah, yep. game three. Wow. Yeah. That was a beautifully <clears throat> played game by Sam. Sam was able to keep the pressure up and, and had more cards in hand. He, he navigated that very well. Yeah, Mar Martin has some very good aggression, and he's got good control for uh, free champions. Yeah. But uh, we're gonna go right over here into what looks like game three against Adrian Sullivan and Nathan Overbay. Well, a lot going on here. Oh, there's an Irwin on yeah. Nathan's side. I'm really excited about that card <laughs> and the design. I just wanted to say. I was just going to say, that's that another is super card cool. that uh, people are like, why is it called Irwin? Well, it's because <laughs> there's a backer named Irwin who, the, who designed the card and who the art is based upon. Yeah. So we're seeing a lot of those cards today, which I think is yeah. very super cool. I'm excited to see Irwin. In, I, wow. oh, I don't know what we happened were just here. I think to this... see the uh, Alchemist Assassin with Mighty Blow, which is a cool kill. Wow. Blitz, that Alchemist Assassin, also a new card. And yeah. Mighty Blow. I was, I mean, what a we combo. Just in time to see a very cool kill. That was Nathan, right? Yeah, I believe yeah. so. Yeah. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, so Nathan picking up uh, his first win of the tournament. And we're going back to see game three between Martin and Sam. So Martin... We'll get to choose if he wants to be on the play or the draw. I expect to see Sam on the play to start this game. He has the Raging T-Rex in hand, but chooses to mulligan it. No other wild cards. 
It's uh, Martin with two. <coughs> Some, yeah, yeah. Great to see some of these Pantheon cards in play. It was a really fun set to design. I'm very excited to see how they uh, really shake up both Dark Draft and Constructed. So it looks like Sam was on the play, and he chose to just pass. Martin says, okay. Goes to, <laughs> goes to his turn and draws. And just like game two, Martin, a lot of pressure right away. I'll be very curious to see if Alchemist Assassin is played and constructed today. That uh, card got a lot of testing for us. Oh, so, oh, so starting off just like the, the previous game. This is game the, three, not game two, but... Uh, <laughs> We didn't it looks very similar. We know it's not a replay because it's 29 yes, yes, yes. not 28 28. <laughs> but uh, uh, again, sim similar start. Sam will not have the T Rex, though. He'll go with the Pack Alpha this game. So, like, oh, I, I have a champion that makes tokens as well. And I can make more. <laughs> Banishment <not>. from Martin. <laughs> Although, interestingly, he, he looks like he did it right. on Sam's turn, so Sam got to draw a card. So again, Martin's quickly getting behind in cards on hand, in hand. Yeah. Between the <clears throat> erase and now banishing on his opponent's turn. Like so, Martin hasn't drawn any extra cards, and Sam's drawn several extra cards. Yeah, Martin must not had much more to do there. Does choose the banishment. All right, so there's getting a little bit more play out of your feint. You got to yeah. draw two, and you just. Prevented four without losing any of your champions. Six with the Roxa. That was a great, great way to keep the the not the wolf up and the the demon out of the way. So then Wolf got a second chance to block. <laughs> Always exciting to see. Uh, I've seen some pretty cool feints. Doesn't come up a lot, but when it does, it's a lot of fun. Wow. So despite not having many cards in hand, uh, Martin still managed to squeeze a couple uh, zombies out of Xanos. Yep. Although he did give Loyalty Sam X. some information there. That is something to talk about. Yeah, those Loyalty 2s, the Loyalty Xs, very powerful. But your opponent can just you know, either memorize or just jot down quickly what you reveal. Um, we see that in Constructed as uh -huh. well sometimes with Xanos. So now Martin may be behind on Karzan, but at least he has a clear board advantage, which he didn't always yeah. have last game. And as we've seen from Sam's deck, he has both Quell and Inheritance of the Meek. Strong board wipes, but when Martin goes wide with both tokens and coins... So it looks like he's playing New Dawn, which actually seems... Yeah, this is New Dawn. Here. First time. So yeah, if it's your... Uh, oh. Gonna read it out there. Yeah, if it is your turn, banish all champions, and then starting with you, each player may put a champion from their hand into play. So eventually, that demon and that zombie will be leaving. Martin's just uh, keeping them out for now, but uh, they're definitely yeah. not gonna be staying there. Oh, that's wow. interesting. So Sam's playing the loyalty. But uh, it, yeah, Wing Death comes in after the fairy entrancer. So it seems like Sam shouldn't have paid the loyalty there because he's just giving away information. Yeah. I mean, he probably declared he was paying loyalty when he played it. Right. And so it just, the timing of what we saw made it look like he was... Actually, right, because he had to play it first. You're yeah, right. So, so presumably, if, he, if, if the order was different, he wouldn't have showed it. Right, but he did have to play it first committed. because of New Dawn. So, well, we couldn't hear what they were saying. Presumably, he said, I'm paying loyalty. And yeah. So he was committed. So w Wing Death doesn't have anyone to get rid of, but, you know, can still hit for four. Okay. And, yeah, that is a time in the round. Martin is turn zero. So despite all Sam's card advantage, uh, it might all be for naught if he can't turn things around pretty quickly. Yeah, Sam's hand <clears throat> looks pretty defensive. He doesn't have the, the Mythic Monster or Brock, the Fist of Lash, not in his hand right now. And that explains why Martin, on turn zero, attacked with that Winged Death. You know, we're going to see things uh, change a little bit. People are going to have to so play... So the... Fire is pretty good here. Yeah. It's definitely a two for one, but again, doesn't help him uh, get ahead. He does go with the Dracus Fire to it clear Martin's like he, board. Looks like he played it on Martin's turn, so he doesn't get the card draw for it. 
And Martin is going to say, Arcane Research, all my cards in my discard pile, I need to find uh, something aggressive. Or just something to, to defend yeah. himself while he right. stays ahead of Sam on uh, the scoreboard. Wow, a lot of interesting options there. So now that he cleared out his discard pile, the zombie pocket is not quite as good as it would be otherwise, but it does prevent a big hit if it comes up. He does go with the zombie apocalypse, and, so choosing to be you know defensive over, at least at this point. What's going on? And a tr and draw two. Then a draw two with Siren Song. Okay. That's right, because uh, he does. Oh, well, there and you he's go. getting in with it. So now he's got some cards in hand. He's way ahead on the scoreboard. He's ahead on the on the board. So Sam wisely is fumbling because he can't afford to fall right. farther behind. And maybe this will get him to something that'll help get him out of this uh, suddenly very. Yeah, the situation. Dark Knight, very good here, especially on turns. <clears throat> wow. And Martin, Cave Troll. Not yep. out of free champions yet. <laughs> Sam's seriously on the back foot now. He does pick up the Brock. I don't know if he has the loyalty. And Sam is turn one. It's always interesting when we design cards to then later see if... Uh, people pronounce them the same way we envisioned oh, when oh. we wrote the name. Did I, am I saying it wrong? <laughs> I don't know. Oh. Basically, I don't know that there's a wrong way to do it. Oh. I just, in my head, it was always Brack. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with Brack. Yeah. Like I said, it's just interesting to see how other people interpret your card games. And that quell, that quell that Sam just played, very strong, banishing both the Dark Knight and the Cave Troll. <laughs> Uh, banishing a cave troll always feels good. Uh, getting it out of there, not being able to for Martin to recur it. The problem is he's just running out of time to change the flip the scoreboard, and and so uh, yeah, it, it's 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 nice to not fall farther behind, but yeah. it's very relevant that he is behind. And at these life totals, I'm not sure. Neither of these players are. And it, it helps gone that long. it helps Martin that he is the one with the flame strike. Yeah. Because obviously if Sam had flame strike, suddenly he can just completely flip this game. Seems like they're talking about it right now. I don't know what they decided, but I, I, I think that's a draw. Um, realizing, yeah, we're already on turn two. We both know this game. We don't have the aggression that we need to finish. Yep. So uh, those two players uh, look like they know what they're doing, and uh, hopefully at this point in the top you know, 32 for the championship event, everyone will know what they're doing, but uh, yeah. I could easily see both of these players doing very well in this tournament based yeah. on what we saw here. Yeah, both of their decks were very strong. Both of their decks had lots of zeros, which I think we'll, we'll see a lot in the, in the feature match area, people prioritizing zeros. They both lots played very draw. well. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they were doing a great job hitting their loyalties, and so clearly they're good at both the draft and the play. And that was a... A tie, correct? Yeah, yeah, they, they yeah. So just yeah, confirming. Just yeah. Um, yeah, that's the end. That's the end of round one. Uh, that was uh, really exciting to see. I I think that Sam was able to put together a, not only a lot of zeros early, but just enough wild to be able to. You know, we saw him able to activate that raging T Rex. And it was uh, nice to get our first taste of Pantheon. Like absolutely. I'm looking forward to seeing yeah. what other cool combos come up and uh, other cool uses for Pantheon yeah. cards. And that Alchemist Assassin. We only saw it for a second, but yeah. that was, that looked but pretty sweet. Uh, Assassin, uh, yeah, I and we've seen a lot of new cards that. already. Yeah. Um, Steel Titan, uh, Brack the Fist of Lashna, <laughs> and uh, as well as a New Dawn and, and all kinds of um, Cast Out. I really liked I really liked Cast Out there and... and I'm really excited to see uh, the effect that they have, both on li limited and constructed. Yeah, and I, I can't wait for constructed. Uh, I've uh, heard at least one player say that uh, they thought that New Dawn was completely broken and constructed, and that they yes. were going to crush everyone with it. So I'll be curious to see yeah, if you can follow. Yeah, I would love to that. see a new deck, uh, uh, New Dawn the, deck, the and constructed. The rumors I've heard are that there's going to be a lot of different deck types, and uh, yes. I think that'd be very. Yeah, I, I was talking to so many different friends, so many different uh, play groups, and a lot of different decks, a lot of different ideas. I think we're going to see a lot of new cards but also just tons of different strategies, and I'd love to see it on stream. Well, yeah. it, uh, if round one is any indication, we're in yeah. for a great day of Epic, um, yeah. and we'll be seeing you back soon for round two. Absolutely. We can also confirm yeah. that...